I want to talk about the concept of an editing PC because I get a lot of questions about this. And over the years, I've kind of perfected what an editing PC consists of. I'm not an absolute expert on this, but there are some very specific features that you're looking for when you're building an editing PC. Now, me and my videographer, Brian, we both use Adobe Premiere, and that actually requires a very specific set of features compared to something like DaVinci Resolve. So the first one, I've, I've mentioned this multiple times before, but an Intel CPU is still really, really good for Adobe Premiere. And that's because the Intel Quick Sync is still able to perform a lot of the rendering work, like the instant rendering on the timeline compared to an AMD CPU. So we've seen huge improvements whenever you're using just a high-end Intel CPU versus a Ryzen CPU. Now, we're only using this 3900X because this is what we already had in the studio. If I was like buying this from scratch, I would 100% uh, have gotten a, a 12th gen Intel chip. But um, it is what it is. You know, like it, it's still it, it's still fine. It's not like it's a, a make or break situation. But as long as you're, if you can't go with the Intel, just the high core count is certainly much appreciated, especially when you get to the more elaborate 4K projects. Uh, the, those multiple cores can start to cut through, especially core speed as well. They can start to cut through that timeline a little bit better. But yeah, a high-end CPU, I think everybody knows, um, is a, a requirement for a good editing PC. I already talked about the RAM, but for our current workflow with editing 4K footage and having some pretty elaborate Adobe After Effects uh, motion graphics on there 64 gigabytes is literally the minimum that anyone that works for ZTT is gonna have so me for my own video editing whenever I do like a pre-roll ad Jason my my remote video editor whenever he does like all the all the motion graphics and whatnot and then Brian's PC here 64 gigabytes is definitely the minimum there there's a huge difference of 32 to 64 and adobe is notorious for it'll use literally as much ram as you give it and 32 is just not enough for our current workflow so keep that in mind the ssd we didn't actually go meta on this ssd for this editing pc so the meta for editing is actually two separate ssds and you have one as a scratch disk which is like all of the temporary data that gets written during the during the PC editing process, there's a lot of temporary data that gets written, rewritten, erased, and all that. You should have a dedicated drive for your scratch disk. You should have a you should have Adobe and everything installed on your main boot drive, which should be an NVMe drive, and then your scratch drive should be an equally fast NVMe drive, but just used for scratch disk. Now we're gonna get away with it because a this is a two terabyte NVMe drive and it's a fast uh, Corsair MP600 core, but b this editing PC is literally not going to be used for anything other than editing video. Like Brian isn't going to be playing any games on this. He's not going to be bogging down this machine. Uh, it's just it, it's 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 pretty much going to stay a fresh Windows 11 install. So that SSD isn't going to be doing a ton of read uh, read and writes on there, other than what he's editing. So that's how we can kind of get away with a single drive. If it was like a drive where you're also if it was a PC where you're also streaming also gaming like doing your school work on like if you're just like putting a ton of applications and programs on there i would definitely separate your scratch drive and your adobe premiere install and boot drive but for a pc like this just a workhorse pc will be perfectly fine you also want an atx motherboard for most cases for an editing pc like over time like you usually like find that you need like a lot of extra USB ports, or if you want to expand to streaming, you're gonna want more PCIe 16 ports for like uh, uh, capture cards and things like that. Like I almost always regret building an ITX and sometimes even a micro ATX for professional workstations. You just tend to want more expandability and even more room um, for like, just like open airflow if you wanna upgrade later on down the line ram and whatnot like you don't want a tiny pc especially with a workhorse pc that you just want it to work uh and then the last thing is using reliable components so as you could tell here we didn't use glowway ram we didn't use yolo ram you know we weren't using off-brand aries game power supplies or anything everything in this build is like a name brand top-notch component 
Um, and not like not like the best of the best, obviously. But we didn't we're, we don't take any chances with this, and that that's also really important, especially when you're running a business, because I can't have my video editor that I pay X amount of dollars for uh, to be like bogged down by or bottlenecked by cheap, risky components. So we're not exactly taking a risk here with EVGA, Corsair, MSI, you know, NZXT. Like we, we have some pretty reliable components in here. So th that would be the last thing um, that I would recommend for an editing PC. But yeah, those are just the thoughts or real quick thoughts on if you are trying to put together an editing PC, definitely some things to keep in mind, especially if you are Adobe Premiere users like us.